So this is the ICBC Learner Guide. I got it from the ICB website. I'll put it on the description for anyone that wants to use the PDF while I read through it or just in general. Um, I thought I would do it this way because it makes it a bit more visual and then you can see what I'm um, referring to when I read along. I'm not the greatest read-alonger <laughs> and I'm very critical so I always stop and go and stop and go. Um, this one I'm going to try to just burn through because if I stop and go it's going to take me my entire life. So this is the learner's guide provided by ICBC to help you pass your end test. Um, your end test will be difficult because they're trying to determine if you're going to be a safe driver or not. Um, so I always recommend taking at least like one or two lessons just so you can kind of see what it's going to be like and get um, input from another person that isn't someone that's a parent or a guardian or a friend. Um, so just for the driver's licensing office, they have this page that tells you what you need to bring to the ICBC office when you go to go ahead. Um, road tests are by appointment only, so you need to book ahead. Here in BC, you usually have to book like two to three months in advance, so the sooner the better, and then um, you know what you're getting. Also, um, here's just the reset areas, so if you don't do well and you fail, um, the knowledge test is seven days all around, but the road test does vary. Um, and again, it's hard to book an appointment, so you may have to go on standby or uh, watch the list to try to get another to road test right away. Um, so here is just the intro again. So visit ICBC to view and download, which is what we're doing right now. And then this is the contents. It won't mean much to you now, but near the end, if you're like studying or something, it will mean more to you. I'm just going to go a little bit slowly so you can read it. And I'm just going to do a chapter at a time. So this chapter, or this one will be the intro in chapter one, but then there'll be chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. As you can see, it covers a lot of topics. Um, I would say that all of these are important and you might not believe me, but I just read through it myself the other day and actually most of these are really relevant and I learned a couple things because I have been driving for 10 years, but of course you forget as you go along. Alrighty, almost at the end of the intro here. There we are. So um, this guide is for new, use, new drivers or experienced drivers. So it's divided into 10 chapters. And like I said, all of it is important. So it's best just to know. Um, sometimes when I'm watching long videos like this, I'll put it on um, a speed of one and a half or one and like a quarter so that um, you can kind of skim through. So um, this guide has the area that speaks about the different things, but then on the side it also has like driving tips, crash facts, and other just general information. Um, so I'll try to cover it all. So the main column, most of your information will show you um, strategies, scenarios, and there's also pictures, which is nice. And the sidebar is all of these fun facts. So here we are, we're gonna start on page five. So you are in the driver's seat. Um, so driving gives the, you the freedom to get around, but it also involves certain risks. When you're in the driver's seat, you need to focus on the task of driving, make good de driving decisions, and look out for the safety of others. This chapter will help you think about the choices you make as a driver to keep yourself and others safe. So be thinking like a driver. So you've had your driver's license for eight months now, and you've become a pretty good driver. This morning, you needed to take the car in to the shop by 9 a.m. for an oil change, and then pick up a friend who lives in the country. You both need to be back in town by noon, and you're not sure if you will have enough time. As you were leaving the house, you had an argument with your roommate, and now you're feeling angry and pressed for time. You have to make many choices as a driver. You have to decide how to choose the best route to get to your destination and 
decide how about how much time you need to get there. You have to make decisions about the safety of your passengers, especially if you're caught in a dangerous situation. You have to decide how much risk to take, and you need to make sure that you can focus on driving before you get behind the wheel. A thinking driver puts safety first. Smart driving is about making choices that help you keep you and others safe. The choices that you make will determine what kind of driver you will be. A thinking driver chooses to be fit to drive, to make good decisions, and to take responsibility. So being fit to drive. It usually takes you 25 minutes to cross town to the garage. When you leave home, it's 8.45. To make matters worse, the traffic is heavy, slowing you down even more. You find yourself swearing under your breath, and you're getting angrier about what your roommate said. You also feel frustrated that you notice you're having trouble concentrating on your driving. What choice would you make? Would you focus on your driving or focus on the argument? So this is actually a real life scenario, right? Like this happens a lot. You get upset and you're driving and you are distracted even if you don't think that you are. So it's always important to make sure that if you are upset or sad or something, just to take a breath and remember like I'm driving, I have to concentrate on this. And if you can't, maybe pull over and take a couple of minutes because you need to be in good shape to drive, alert and able to focus. Feeling angry or frustrated can cloud your judgment and slow down your reaction time. You also need to avoid driving if you've had an injury or illness that makes it hard for you to think clearly or quickly. Never drive when you are overtired. Even if you don't fall asleep, it is hard to respond quickly when you feel tired. And as a new driver, you may think that you will not fall asleep if you're tired and you're driving, but that is not true. Unfortunately, in my 10 years of driving, I have fallen asleep twice behind the wheel. Once it was sunny and I was sleepy and I was driving. And then another time it was after work, late, I was really tired and I also fell asleep. Luckily, both of those times didn't end in a collision, but it very easily could have. Um, a driver who's impaired by drugs or alcohol is also one of the worst driving hazards. This is because drugs and alcohol cause mental confusion and slow reaction times. Impaired drivers are much more likely to cause crashes that lead to serious injury or death. I don't think I need to tell people that you do not drink or do drugs when you drive because like the book says, it does impair your judgment and also your reaction time and it can cause so many ramifications on your driving career and just your life and career in general. Make good decisions. You have to be quick and accurate when you're driving. Will you be tempted to run a yellow light because you're in a hurry? Will you take off your eyes off the road to send a text message while driving? Will you take chances and drive after you've been drinking? Being a safe driver requires learning, planning, predicting, and thinking for yourself. So you're in the driver's seat part three. As you're driving, you spot a playground sign. You know you have to slow down, but you can't remember when the playground speed limits are in effect. The sign doesn't say. Is the playground speed limit in effect today? As you are driving through the playground, you can't remember for certain. Which choice should you make? The playground zone is 30 kilometers an hour, and this limit is in effect every day from dawn to dusk. Or will you not worry about it and think, signs are easy, I'll know what they mean when I see them. Again, as a experienced driver, as I was reading through this, I actually learned some, some things about the different signs that I didn't realize before. Um, so it's always good to know your signs really well, especially when you're a new driver. You're reading this guide to learn about driving. This is the first step in becoming a good driver. You'll also spend time practicing your driving skills and maybe even take professional driving training to enhance your learning. Again, I recommend one or two. You can do a whole course if you want, but it does get expensive. Um, so then, but it is important to keep on learning even after you have your license. It will take time for you to gain driving experience. You'll continually learn how to handle new driving situations and conditions, and will need to keep informed about changing vehicle technology. You'll also need to learn about changes that are made to the rules and regulations of the road. Um, again, there's always a new situation, rain, snow, ice, and also um, just common courtesy. So like when you're driving on the road, there's a bunch of things that I didn't know as a new driver that now I know when I'm driving in general. And um, so I know how to like, if I do something stupid, I can raise my hand and wave at someone. Or if I am having car problems, you put on your hazards and you slow down, and move to the right. Or just like different common courtesies, like even in a parking lot, using your signal can help a lot just with aggravation for yourself and other drivers. And these are things that you're going to learn over time. 
Um, so your skills as a driver will also change. As you gain experience, your skills will increase, but you may also become overconfident and too automatic in your driving. Health problems could affect your ability to drive safely. Throughout your driving years, it is important for you to be honest with yourself about your skills and your readiness to learn, or readiness to drive, sorry. Remember that driving education courses are available for beginning and experienced drivers. Choose one that is right for you. So um, it will give you options in chapter nine. Plan your driving. So you're in the driver's seat part four. Now you're definitely going to be late. You stop, start worrying about missing your appointment for the oil change and being late to pick up your friend. You think about going faster. What choice would you make? Take a chance in speed or keep to the speed limit and plan your time better in the future. Again, another thing you can do is call ahead, right? So if you're ever running late, it's better just to call and be like, hey, I'm running 10, 15 minutes late. So then everyone's happy and you don't have to rush when you're on the road. So part of good driving is planning ahead. This means planning enough time to get to your destination and knowing the shortest and safest route. It may mean equipping your vehicle for winter driving conditions. Can you think of any other driving plans you may need to make? So predict the scene. You're in the driver's seat, part five. You're driving too fast. You forget to watch the traffic lights at the next intersection. Suddenly you find yourself coming up to the intersection and the light has already turned yellow. What choice should you make? Predict the scene ahead or respond in a hurry. So that light should could change soon. Should I stop or go? Um, so yellow lights. If someone's turning here in the op opposing lane, um, they're, they're going to turn on a yellow light. So if someone's there, I always stop because the chances of an accident are so high. And also just in general, if you see the yellow light when you're this far back as a car, then you're going to hit a red for sure and you're best to stop. The only times that running a yellow is acceptable is if the light is about to turn red and you're way too close to the intersection or you're already in the intersection. Again, also consider the abilities of your car. So for myself, I have an old car and if I try to stop when I'm really close in a yellow, I'm not gonna be able to stop in time. So in that case, I would have to go. Whereas my boyfriend who has a newer car would be able to stop regardless of where he was. Um, so again, planning ahead, right? Knowing your vehicle and knowing the situation that you're dealing with. And then also think about this. What would you do if a child suddenly ran in front of your car? Could you stop in time? Um, so just, I, you have to remember, you're not the only driver on the road and you're also dealing with pedestrians, children, pets, animals, all sorts of things. So you just have to be really aware and sometimes it's not better to rush it. It's just better to stop take a breath, and then continue. As a driver, you need to be aware of cues in the driving environments, signs, signals, and road markings. Paying attention to these cues will help you predict what could happen so that you're prepared to respond. It's also important to predict what other road users, pedestrians, other drivers, motorcycle riders, and cyclists might do. You can predict what will happen by carefully observing the driving scene around you. Being aware of what others are around you are doing will help you make better choices for driving. So again, just what I was saying, so many things going on, it's better to be fully prepared and aware of everything. You are in the driver's seat part six. There's one more intersection before the garage. You have to turn left and there's no advanced green arrow. You sat through this light at other times because the traffic is so heavy here. You become more frustrated as you wait to turn. Cars are lined up behind you with their left turn signals flashing. The driver behind you is starting to honk at you. You see a space but hesitate because you're not sure if the gap is big enough for you to make your turn. Which choice would you make? Wait until you feel there's a safe gap or turn just to please other drivers. So this is a common, common thing. Every day you're gonna have this. And at the end of the day, if you're following the rules and you're not comfortable, then that's it, right? If someone's speeding behind you and tailgating you, but you're doing the limit and you're comfortable with that, then oh well, they just have to wait until they can pass you or until you turn off. And at the end of the day, that's just what you have to decide. Otherwise, driving is gonna be very frustrating. <laughs> so think about what you will do. What will you do when people honk their horn at you? What will you do if someone's tailgating you? Will you be tempted to speed just because other drivers around you are going faster than the speed limit? Again, it always comes down to your personal standards of safety and just the way that you're gonna be a driver in general. So that's for you to decide, not for other drivers. Another part of making good choices is knowing yourself and understanding the influences that shape your driving. 
Influences from other drivers. At times you will feel pressured from other drivers and you'll have to decide what to do. Will you base your driving decisions on safety or will you allow other drivers to pressure you into doing something that might be unsafe? Influences from the media. Think of the images of cars and driving in ads and mo movies. Do these images generally promote safe driving? Obviously not. <laughs> Influences from peers. Other people can influence your driving. Your friends may pressure you to drive faster or race away from stoplights. You may think it will oppress them to turn up the volume on your car stereo. Of course, we're always going to want to please other people, especially our friends. Um, again, you have to make your own choices and being safe with your friends is always going to be better than ending in a car crash with your friends. So what kind of person do you want to be is essentially what it comes down to. Take responsibility. Becoming a licensed driver means that you are taking on new responsibilities for yourself, your passengers, and other road users. You in the driver's seat, part seven. You've been to the garage and now you're on your way to your friend's house. You're relieved because it seems like you have enough time after all. Then you notice a large truck ahead that's going pretty slowly. You hate passing trucks, especially on a narrow road like this. What, this is, what choice would you make? Slow down and stay behind the truck? or try to try, try to pass the truck even though you don't feel comfortable doing so. Again, it's important to know and accept the limits of your driving abilities and your vehicle. You also need to take responsibility for de developing your driving skills and ensuring your own safety. As a new driver back in the day, I would for sure not feel comfortable in this situation, but now, um, depending, I would kind of poke out and see if there's a space. Again, I have an old car and I know that it's gonna take me time to accelerate to pass the car in front of me and to get in front of them with a safe space for myself and for them. So know your limits, right? If you don't think you can make it, then don't do it because you're never gonna win against someone coming straight at you at the same speed. Okay, so you in the driver's seat, part eight. You, see, you greet your friend as he climbs into the car. You're happy to see him, but you're surprised when he doesn't put on his seatbelt. What choice would you make? Ask him to buckle up or don't say anything because you're worried about offending him. Um, so this is really crucial. Of course, some people choose not to wear seatbelts, um, but sometimes people, they just get excited and they totally forget. So um, you can just keep the car parked and be like, oh, I don't start the car until everyone has their seatbelts on and make kind of a joke out of it, um, which is what I have done a couple of times. Um, or you can, if they refuse their seatbelt, you can tell them that in BC, when you don't wear a seatbelt, I believe it is the person that isn't wearing the seatbelt that pays the fine, not the driver. So usually people don't want to pay and they'll just wear their seatbelt because it's more convenient than not. Also, most cars flash and beep when you don't wear your seatbelt if it's a newer car. So crash fact, one out of every four people killed in a car crash was not wearing a seatbelt. And that's true, right? Because if a car stops suddenly, then your only option if you're not wearing a seatbelt is to go through the windshield or somewhere in the car. And of course, you're going to get more hurt that way. So you as a driver are responsible for the safety of your passengers. Make sure they're all wearing seatbelts. Children need special care and attention. Are they properly restrained with the right safety devices for their size? Remember, when you speed or take chances at intersections, you're putting your passengers and yourself at danger. Smoking. It is illegal to smoke in any motor vehicle car when there are any passengers under 16 years old. Children traveling in cars are especially vulnerable to secondhand smoke. These harmful effects are heightened in small enclosed areas such as motor vehicles and can have immediate and serious long lasting health consequences. Um, so with children, always be super careful, right? Like they all have different car seats and different restrictions. And um, if you're driving with them, more than likely you are the parent or you have their parent with you. And so they'll be aware of those as well. You are in the driver's seat part nine. You and your friend are almost back in town. As you approach the intersection, you notice a skateboarder heading along the sidewalk, but near to the crosswalk. What choice would you make? Be cautious and slow down or take a chance and keep going. Again, as a road user, you have to be aware of everyone around you. Maybe you are following all the rules, but that doesn't mean everybody else is going to. So if I saw this, I would definitely slow down because skateboarders in general are usually a little edgy and they might just decide to bolt across. <laughs> you also share the roadway with cars, trucks, trains, motorcyclists, and cyclists. Pedestrians need to cross your driving path as well. 
Ambulances need you to move to the side of the road so they can respond to life-threatening situations. You never know when an animal might dart into your path. So there's also um, information in this guide later on for tuning up drivers that will help you make responsible driving choices that will prevent dangerous situations. So you and your vehicle. This is chapter two, so I'm just gonna start it in the next video. Uh, I just wanted to say, I know that driving seems a little bit scary, but it's actually not too bad once you get the handle of it. Again, the whole learning process is for you to get a handle on it. And same with your end, you're gonna learn things constantly throughout your driving career, and that's important, and that's fine. So good luck on your driving, and I hope you didn't hate this video. <laughs>